Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. And today I'm going to do a sort of an extension of the seven days of personal shares and go into some like sort of relationship oriented shares, but um, just other really powerful lessons and how I learned them, because I find that sometimes we learn very well through other people's stories. Um, so I figured I would share some of this with you, and hopefully this would be something to benefit you on your journey. Hey, I just wanted to jump in here really quick and let you know exciting news, which is that we are launching round two of integrated attachment theory coaching training. This is training with me about everything related to attachment styles, reconditioning the subconscious mind, and also includes a full session all about how to build your business, how to produce funnels, how to really up level so that you can work from home, work with clients, have the freedom and flexibility you want to be of service to contribute after a whole bunch of training really learning about these tools and tips from the inside out. I'm really excited to be sharing this. We won't be doing this again till literally probably October of next year, 2023. Um, so join now while you can. We're doing this because of popular demand from our last one. Our seats filled up so quickly and I would love to be able to share this with you. So if you want to learn more and get on the list below, you can click the link in the description box and we begin this October 5th. So today I want to talk about how I learned how to trust. Um, and I would say, since I can basically remember, um, I didn't really know how to trust. Um, I was very fearful avoidant as my attachment style. Did a lot of work on that over the years. And um, one of the big lessons I had to figure out was like how to actually learn to trust other people. And, you know, I think there was a few really interesting initial roadblocks that stopped me from feeling comfortable to do that. And then some really important lessons that I learned when I did some introspection around trust and sort of wanted to be able to have that in my relationships going forward. So as a fearful avoidant, there were a few really common things that um, I shared with other fearful avoidants, which are, I was completely hypervigilant. I had sort of grown up in an environment where I was like constantly walking on eggshells and having to be really hypervigilant. And there were, you know, different challenges in my home environment where I just felt like I couldn't really trust in general um, around a lot of different things. Now, not all things, but there was a lot of like broken trust in different forms. So, you know, you sort of assume as a kid, like, oh, if I can't seem to really trust my caregivers consistently, then how am I going to trust other people in, in romantic relationships, right? Like if you can't trust family members to a certain degree as a kid, then you, you carry that with you, right? You project that out onto to your adult romantic relationships. And bigger than anything else, I would say, is that I didn't want to trust. Um, I believed, and after introspecting about my beliefs to sort of come into harmony with my relationship to trust, um, I believed that like if I was going to trust somebody, I would be fooled and then I would be stupid. Um, and that was a big core wound I had around that. So it was like, okay, well, I don't want to put myself out there and, and try to trust somebody in a relationship because it's just going to hurt anyways. So what's the point? Why bother? And so I really kept people at bay. And then when I started like really doing healing work um, and really like wanting to do a deep dive, I knew that this was an area that I really struggled with. And I realized like, I have to really evaluate this as a person and decide like, am I willing to work on this or not? And so I really sort of like imagined my two potential trajectories as a person. I was like, okay, on one side, I'm hypervigilant. I never really open my heart in relationships because I think that I'm going to get burned um, or I open my heart, you know, part of the way, but never like fully. Um, and, you know, it's better to try to trust and, and try to feel comfortable and safe and like really open myself and get hurt than it is to um, just never trust and always still feel this like suspicion and fear and disconnect and be closed off to protect myself, like going into relationships. Like I don't want to live like that my whole life. And so this is something I'm really kind of willing to work on. So I first like introspected my beliefs about trust. And I was like, okay, well, what do I believe? Like what scares me about trusting? And like I said, like one of this, these huge things was, well, if I trust, I'll be stupid. I'll be foolish. I'll be, you know, let down. I'll be caught off guard when I'm let down. That's even worse. You know, all these fears. And then I really started to look at some of like, okay, well, how do other people trust? Like I see other people around me and they seem to be able to trust normally. And like, I'm sure people let them down sometimes or break their trust in different forms at times. Like, how do they cope? And what I noticed that was super interesting is that they had different expectations around trust. 
and a different ability to move through broken trust than I did. So for me, as a fearful avoidant at the time, I would just shut down, right? That was it. I'm out of here. <laughs> That's, you broke my trust. You lied once. It's over, you know, and these really strong like responses to things. But I noticed more securely attached people um, did a couple things that were interesting. Number one, they had expectations that people weren't going to be perfect. And I think I was carrying this thing because I was so afraid of being burned around trust. That was like, if you burn me once it's over, like, like almost expecting like nobody could ever tell a white lie. Nobody could ever let me down with something vulnerable. Nobody could make mistakes. And I realized like carrying these expectations into relationships was something I was using to protect myself, but something that wasn't really protecting me long-term, right? It was something that was actually like maybe initially protecting and then actually hurting me long-term because I kept feeling let down and disappointed. Um, but it was more my expectations of people disappointing me, like people have to be perfect in the trust area or else. And it was like my expectations disappointing me more than like a person. And I realized like people aren't going to be perfect in relationships. And it was actually up to me. And I had the responsibility to let somebody know when they made a mistake. And so if I could go to somebody and say, hey, what you did hurt me and that wasn't cool. And like, I want to hash it out and I need a boundary next time, or I need to understand where you're coming from when you did that. Um, and if I was like willing to have that honest dialogue, one of the biggest things I realized through actually practicing this is that people showed up so much better than I ever imagined. So it's sort of like I had to change my expectations around trust and start seeing how people, yes, may let you down, may betray your trust by accident sometimes, may white lie when they feel bad about something, or may, um, you know, just make human mistakes. Like human beings are imperfect, right? We're all going to make mistakes sometimes. But if I didn't have these massive expectations of people, then it wasn't like as big of a deal. And that I also had to go to people and communicate a boundary and be responsible for like talking things out. And it didn't mean I had to stick around in relationships that were not serving or where people were constantly breaching trust or anything like that. But it was like, hey, if you have a really close friend or a romantic partner, someone you're dating or seeing or family member and somebody messes up, they're gonna mess up. But if I go to them and I say, hey, you hurt me, like that situation hurt, here's what I need to feel better. And I considered myself and I set a boundary and I went to them and let them know, people responded way better than I ever could have imagined. And so that was like this huge um, sort of lesson. And it was really scary at first. Like I actually literally remember the first time I was vulnerably communicating a need and I was like terrified, <laughs> like really, really scared. Like, I can't believe this. And I had to work through different beliefs too, right? Like it wasn't just that I had to work through beliefs that like, I'm weak. If I trust other people, I'm weak. If I have to like ask for support or help, um, I'll be stupid or foolish if I do trust people and then I'll get let down and like the wolves pulled over my eyes. Like I had to work through those beliefs and see like, well, what life do I want to live? Like constantly never trusting anybody, never reaching out, never really allowing myself to like have that experience or try it and then like work through stuff when there's problems, like communicate through pain points. So that was like a huge first lesson. There's some other big ones in here though. Um, and by the way, if you want to do a deep dive into some of this stuff, I have a whole course on this. <laughs> um, and it's called Rebuilding Broken Trust and Overcoming Jealousy. And um, you can try it out for free for seven days using the link below, but it actually takes you through all these different um, reprogramming your beliefs about trust and looking at the cost of not trusting and um, then taking the action steps towards trusting and how to communicate about things. Now, there's these other really important parts that are covered in the course too that I'm going to share from this personal perspective, which is that I also realized, and this is one of the biggest parts to like overcoming fears of trusting and trust wounds, is that I wasn't I like, I kept violating my own trust. I kept breaking my own trust and it was almost like my shadow, right? It was like, I was so, you know, hurt and upset and frustrated if I felt like somebody else broke my trust, but it was actually a reflection of my own doing. And that looked like I would always prioritize other people's needs over my own. I would violate my own boundaries to like, please other people at times. And I would totally not consider myself. So like, consideration wasn't really working well for me. I wasn't that consistent. Sometimes I'd be like, oh, I'm going to set a boundary for myself. And then I wouldn't follow through. And it's like these things that we need to trust other people. I was actually breaking down in the relationship to myself because that's what I knew, right? Like it wasn't like, oh, I'm messing everything up. It was like, oh, the, this is my conditioning. And I realized that. 
And so I have to work through that. And so I went through like really evaluating like all the places I break my own trust. And I found the big ones were like, um, in working relationships, I would do that sometimes, um, with people in my family friendships. Like I would just say yes to things to help people if I thought they were going through a hard time. Um, and I wouldn't like be like, is that a yes for me? <laughs> like, where am I at in that? And I wouldn't like leave room to negotiate needs. Um, I would, you know, violate my own boundaries through a lot of things like that in general as well. And I did that in, in dating relationships at the beginning too. And I had to like really figure that one out. Like I have to really be able to see what's a yes for me and a no for me and respect that. Because if I don't, even if I'm afraid of hurting somebody else's feelings, I'm breaking my trust and that has to be sacred to me. And if I expect myself to be able to trust anybody else in my life, it's going to have to start with me first. And so I really did like a deep dive into that um, and realized like, okay, I can be better at setting boundaries, be better at considering myself, sticking up for myself, showing up for myself and not just doing it when I'm angry, when I've reached a boiling point, but all those little points in between. Um, and that's how I'm going to rebuild a subconscious comfort zone of trust. And then I'll also trust myself to be able to leave something if it's not really working, right? I can, or set a boundary with somebody if they're not treating me appropriately, I won't, you know, put up with it in the same way. So I really did a lot of work on that. And so from the top, it was sort of like, what are my, my fears of even being open to trusting, working through some of those fears using reprogramming tools for the subconscious mind, then evaluating my own relationship to trust and the relationship to myself and managing my expectations of other people, right? It was like, I needed you to be perfect because I was so, I was still in this pattern of breaking my own trust, breaking my own boundaries. That if you did back to me, what I'm doing to myself all the time, if you reflected that back to me, it was so, it was like the straw that broke the camel's back all the time. Like I would feel so mad, so taken advantage of, but like those were a lot of my own patterns I was bringing into relationships. And I often wasn't telling people my boundaries. So how could they possibly know whether it was going to feel violated by something or not? So a lot more of that was super beneficial. And, you know, so this is 10 plus years ago, I guess now, which is crazy. Um, that I really started doing that work. And now I'm in a place where like, in real time, if somebody says to me, I need help with something, or I need you to do this, I need that. I'm like very able. And this was a practice. It took me a little bit to get here. It wasn't like an overnight thing, but I'm very able to like hear them express care towards them, but then pause and like consider myself for a moment. Like, okay, am I available to help them? Do I actually have that time? Do I have that energy? Do I have the, you know, whatever it is that they're needing to be able to give and if the answer is a no, my next thing would be like, well, is there anything else I can do, right? Like if somebody says, oh, I need you to help me move all weekend, but I can't help all weekend, I might say, hey, I'm not available the whole weekend, but I'm available for two hours between 10 and 12 a.m. on Sunday, right? So I can still consider myself, see what I can give, but it's fair to me and my own needs, my own boundaries and where I'm at as a person as well. And that makes for this healthy exchange in relationships. And securely attached people naturally see this growing up, naturally have modeling for this, right? But um, fearful avoidance who struggle with trust the most generally don't have modeling for this. And so, you know, sometimes it's like this whole foreign world to, to sort of practice. Um, but it's one of the best things you'll ever do because you'll feel like, oh, I can actually let my guard down in relationships, trust people, feel seen and heard and connected. Um, because if I have a boundary or someone makes a mistake, I can go to them and tell them what I need and tell them that something affected me. And a lot of times people get back on board to try to improve something and show that they care and value the relationship with you. So I hope this all makes sense. Um, if you have more questions, let me know. But I have a whole course built around this. Um, for anybody who's ever struggled with these things, it's sort of your shortcut to learning this the fast way um, and feeling regulated in your relationships, safe being more vulnerable, safe connecting more deeply with people and not feeling like you have to like keep parts of yourself hidden or hide parts of yourself or not show too much of your inadequacies or wounds because you can't trust somebody fully. Like there's just so much you know, frustration and like heaviness that comes with all of that programming. Um, so anyways, I hope that all makes sense. Again, you can check out that course for free for seven days using the link below. And thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much.